Professor James St. James was born James Gordon Wolcott, and in 1967 he murdered his entire family in Georgetown, Texas when he was 15 years old. Yeah, we don't want to do anything to scare your children. That's the last thing we want to do. We don't want to scare anybody. Walcott was the son of Dr. Gordon Walcott, a biology professor at Southwestern University, and Elizabeth Walcott, as well as brother to his older sister, Libby Walcott. James was a very intelligent teenager with an IQ of 134. In spite of this, he didn't really get along with his parents due to his activity with the Vietnam War protests, and even had a deep hatred for them along with his sister because he believed they were trying to drive him insane. During this time, James described incidences where he felt his mother was chewing her food so loudly that he had to leave the room, and other instances such as his sister's strong accent, a disorder known as misophonia. In 1966, he began to have suicidal thoughts, and a week prior to the night of August 4, 1967, began planning their murders. On the night of the murders, Libby went out to a show with her friends and returned home around 10 p.m., at which time she and her mother went to bed while Dr. Walcott stayed up. Before the assault on his family, James sniffed airplane glue to give himself a boost and then grabbed a 22 caliber long barrel rifle. After loading the weapon, James shot his father twice in the chest, then went to Libby's room where he shot her in the chest and face. Being awoken by the noise of the gunshots, Elizabeth rose from the bed and was shot three times in the head and face. After the onslaught of his family, James stashed the gun in the attic space above his bedroom and left the house around one in the morning. He then proceeded to flag down a car of college students and ask for help, telling them his family had been killed, at which time the students entered the house and discovered the three bodies with Elizabeth still alive but struggling to breathe and called emergency services. When police and medical assistants arrived, James acted hysterical as if he were in shock. The students, however, believed the gunman may still be in the house and left the scene. When informed of his mother's passing, James dropped the facade and simply said, thank you. When questioned by police, James was asked directly if he had killed his parents, at which time he hesitated briefly and then admitted to the murders. After his confession, James was arrested and held in Williamson County Jail, with the murders being all the talk in local press, and even gained national attention. While in custody, James was evaluated by Dr. Douglas Benold and diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia, which was enhanced by inhaling airplane glue. At his trial, James was found not guilty by reason of his insanity and committed to Rusk State Hospital indefinitely. During his time at the hospital, James completed his GED and was released in 1974. Two years later, he had his name legally changed to James David St. James in order to distance himself from the Walcott name and left the state, after which time he earned his bachelor's degree in psychology and his Ph.D., at which time he began working at Millican University in Decatur, Illinois, where he won a number of awards during his career as a professor and even accepted position of head of the university's behavioral science department. It was during this time that St. James started a family of his own. St. James' identity was revealed in July of 2013 when a reporter from Georgetown Advocate investigated the murders as well as James Wolcott and his release from the hospital, discovering that he'd changed his name and became a well-respected university professor. The city of Decatur and the surrounding areas immediately exploded with outrage as the now-deceased mayor Mike McElroy called for St. James' resignation. University officials gave a public statement to media, stating, Given the traumatic experiences of his childhood, Dr. St. James's efforts to rebuild his life and obtain a successful professional career have been remarkable. They refused to terminate his employment, and St. James remained as a professor at Millican University until he retired in the spring of 2022. For more information regarding the case and schizophrenia, you can check out episode 3 of the podcast Crimes Against Mentality on crimesagainstmentality.com. The link will be in the description below. So, I have a little bit of a per personal connection to this. As you guys can see, 
I obtained my bachelor's in psychology from Millican University. I also obtained my minor in criminal justice from the same university. And I had Professor St. James in my, I believe it was advanced experimental psychology, which is basically a advanced statistics class. I didn't really have him for any other psychology classes. He was out for half the year, the beginning of my freshman year. He had injured his leg or something like that and had to have surgery. So he was out until the second semester, which is when I had him. Or actually, that would have been my junior year because I did freshman and sophomore at Richland and then junior, senior at Milliken. Everyone in my class, um, it it was kind of weird because I was the oldest one in my class and everyone else kind of sat further back in the classroom. They obviously knew about him, knew uh, his reputation, knew about the murders. Um, and the controversy and everything, and they were very hesitant um, when class began. So they sat further back. I, however, being that I study serial killers, being that I've written a book on a prominent serial killer that I was working on my criminal justice degree, uh, as well as my psychology degree, I was really intrigued. So... I sat in the very front. I literally sat right in front of where he lectured. So during class, I was very, very close to him. For the first half of the semester, we had to wear the masks because of COVID. And then halfway through the semester, they allowed us to stop wearing masks and became more lenient on the restrictions and everything. Um, During the time of wearing the masks, I watched his facial expressions uh, constantly during lectures and I could never tell when he was being serious when he was joking when he was mad happy whatever because his eyes had for lack of a better term his eyes had that sociopathic look to them um when I say that that means That's not the whole wide-eyed thing um, that a lot of people who have mental breaks uh, end up having. This is more kind of like how my eyes are now, but constantly. No no emotion showed in the eyes whatsoever. And I don't know if that had to do with his schizophrenia. Um, Obviously, he would have had to been on medication for his schizophrenia. Uh, because it can't be cured. So I, I paid very close attention to mainly his uh, facial expressions and everything. He would start most classes with playing some 70s music. He he would usually come into class um, right before the start. He, uh, he was head of the department. Um, His office was right upstairs from where our class was, which in this university, faculty didn't have specific rooms um, for all their classes. Each class was in like different room. So they were all over the place a lot of times. Um, So a lot of times professors ended up coming in a little late uh, because of how far they had to travel between classes. And he, he would always wear the same um, style of clothing every day. It was usually a pair of blue jeans, sneakers, a t-shirt, and then a cardigan sweater vest with a long sleeve button up over it that uh, he would usually take off uh, right at the start of class. Uh, Long ponytail, um, and then the handlebar mustache, or beard, uh, goatee, I think. Yeah, I think it was like shaved here, and but it was all really long. There were instances where he would get pissed off, but it wasn't at anyone in the classroom. He would get pissed off at the people who designed the layout of the room. Uh, we had regular chalkboards as well as a screen that would be pulled down for the projector. 
And on the chalkboard, at the end of, on each side of the chalkboard, there was a spot for post-its, for notices and stuff like that to be pinned up there. And he thought that was the dumbest thing. Um, and he would constantly get pissed off about the way the chalkboard was laid out, the way the classroom was laid out and designed, and how the screen for the projector comes right over the uh chalkboard but he would always he would only ever show emotion with the lower part of his face sometimes he would throw something across the room like an eraser or something like that um or like kind of kick a chair uh not not hard just like kick it out of his way he he was a nice guy he did he has a sense of humor from what i could tell uh, and he joined in some of our conversations be, uh, when he got to class early enough where we were just conversing back and forth, talking about everyday stuff. Uh, occasionally he would talk about his granddaughter, stuff like that, but never really got personal. I'm six feet tall and he was quite a bit shorter than me. Probably came up about chest height, maybe a little bit taller, but. From what I could tell, talking with some of the other students in my class before he would get to class, they were kind of nervous around him. One in particular who sat right behind me, he was very nervous. He was getting ready to go into the military, and he he had never actually been that close to a murderer before. So he, he was quite nervous about uh, being in the class and constantly on alert. I didn't really get the feeling that St. James was hostile or out of his mind or anything like that. Uh, he just kind of seemed like a normal guy, which, I mean, we could say that about all killers, but you got to think this happened when he was 15 years old, schizophrenia. Plus it was uh, enhanced due to the huffing of airplane glue. Um, this was model airplane glue all these other mental health disorders and mental health plays a huge part of an individual. I don't know. It just, I didn't really get the sense that other than he never really showed emotion with his eyes. Um, I never really got the sense that anything else was wrong with him. Um, I've heard from other students that he liked to, uh, go to a local bar on campus in the evening and drink. And once he get a little, a little tipsy, he would actually open up about the murders and talk your ear off about them. Uh, I never experienced that myself. I rarely go to bars. This is just what I've heard from other students. And he did retire at the end of that semester. I was in one of his last classes uh, that he taught. Uh, he is still, um, an advisor or like a um, uh, observer for the department. But yeah, he, he, he just a normal guy. I know people who know him personally and they don't really talk about him. I think he's trying to be a normal guy now. Um, we all do stupid shit when we're young, especially when mental health is involved. And his stupid shit just happened to have been... Uh, fact that he killed his family because of his schizophrenia and uh misophonia um which is where sounds are enhanced for a person um chewing um see uh accents are a lot stronger um it's almost like autism on steroids um when combined with schizophrenia so Hope you guys enjoyed this video. A um, little bit different today. Uh, I'm going to try and do more of these. I know I have I haven't done an actual video in over a year. And it's because I've been so busy working on my degrees. Um, I just turned 40 last year. I uh, graduated with my bachelor's in psychology and criminal justice last spring. And I'm currently enrolled at Northwestern University uh, in their online campus for clinical counseling for my master's program. 
Plus, I'm working as a substitute teacher here in the school districts around me. Um, so I'm quite busy, but I'm going to try to put out um, one of these videos once every couple weeks or something like that. Um, I've been doing a lot more on TikTok, talking about mental health and my struggles with autism and borderline personality disorder. Um, so if you want to find me on there, um, I'll leave a link in the description below. Take care, everyone. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss a single video. Give us a like, leave a comment below, and please share the video with your family and friends. I've been Shannon, and this has been Psychology of the Unknown.